Welcome to 5 Minute School. Today's video we're going to be talking about the proximal convoluted tubule. Specifically we'll be talking about how reabsorption is occurring. The proximal convoluted tubule is this region here in the nephron. And what we need to understand to begin the video is that blood is initially going to arrive via an afferent arterial to the glomerular capillaries. What's inside these glomerular capillaries is blood. One of the constituents of blood is obviously blood plasma. Now, all of the plasma solutes, with the exception of the large proteins, is going to get filtered through to form the glomerular ultrafiltrate. Now, what this means is the components of the glomerular ultrafiltrate is pretty much going to be the same as the blood plasma. So what that also means is the concentration is also going to be the same. So that concentration is 300 milliosmoles per liter. That's the total solute concentration. So what we can say is the filtrate or the glomerular ultrafiltrate at this point here is isoosmotic with plasma. Reabsorption by osmosis can't occur unless the solute concentrations of plasma in the peritubular capillaries and the filtrate are altered by active transport processes. The glomerular capillaries here uh, arrives via an afferent arterial, then leads away by an efferent arterial, which eventually forms the peritubular capillaries which wrap around the nephron tubules. So, uh, reabsorption by osmosis can't occur if the tubular fluid is isoosmotic with the plasma in the peritubular capillaries. So what we have to do is alter the filtrate by active transport processes. And it, the processes are active transport of sodium ions from the filtrate to the peritubular blood. And in this video we're going to look into it in a little bit more detail. So let's look at active and passive transport and how this comes about. So the proximal convoluted tubule, uh, the wall of it is made up of epithelial cells and these ep epithelial cells are joined together by tight junctions. I've included this uh, exaggerated diagram here at the bottom right of your screen. Here is the proximal convoluted wall which is made up of these epithelial cells. You can see an inter interstitial space here in between the epithelial cells, here is the peritubular capillary and here is the lumen of the uh, nephron tubule or the proximal tubule. So the epithelial cells, these make up the wall of the proximal tubule. They are joined together by these tight junctions on the apical side, closer to the apical side. Uh, each cell, each epithelial cell has four sides. So we have the apical side, which is the one which is closest to the lumen of the tubule. Uh, the apical side also will have these microvilli extensions to increase the surface area for absorption. The basal side is the one which is facing the peritubular capillary, so that's at this end here. And the two lateral sides which are on the side here, on these proximal surfaces here. Now, the concentration of sodium ions in the glomerular ultrafiltrate and thus fluid entering the proximal tubule is the same as that in plasma. We've already mentioned that at the beginning. Now, the cytoplasm in epithelial cells of the tubule has a much lower sodium ion concentration, so it's a lot lower inside the uh, epithelial cells. And this is due to a low permeability of plasma membrane to sodium ions and partially due to active transport of sodium ions out of the cells by the sodium and potassium transport pumps, which are these orange circles which you can see here and in the epithelial cells of the proximal tubule the sodium and potassium pumps are located on the basal and lateral surfaces so you can see them here on the sides and at the top here now what this means is what I've just said basically is the sodium concentration sodium iron concentration inside these cells is low and that's ma mainly because they are going to be active transported out so when they're active actively transported out they're going to be transported to the interstitial space here, okay? And this is below the peritubular capillary. So the result of these act active transport pumps is it creates a concentration gradient. And what this does is it favors the diffusion of sodium from the tubular fluid across the apical plasma membrane here of the epithelial cell and into the actual cytoplasm of the epithelial cells of the proximal tubule wall. Now, so it's going to be a higher concentration of sodium ions. It's going to passively diffuse here into the uh, cytoplasm. And remember, it, the 
the concentration of sodium ions is going to be lower here because of these active transport pumps which are pumping out any sodium in the cell to the interstitial space here. So as I've just said, the sodium ions is then released into the surrounding interstitial fluid by these pumps, which is uh, this region here. The next bit is going to explain the electrochemical gradient which is created by this effect. So sodium is obviously going to be charged. So if you transport the sodium ions uh, from the tubular fluid uh, and then to this interstitial space here, there's going to be a lot of positive sodium ions which are going to be here. And then this creates a sort of potential difference across the wall of the tubule. So the outside is going to be positive here and the lumen is going to be the negative pole. So this, this region here is going to be positive and this region here is going to be negative. So when we create this electric electrical gradient, it sort of favours the passive transport of the chloride ions in the uh, tubule to move towards the positive uh, sodium ion and higher sodium ion concentration here in the interstitial fluid. So the chloride ions which are negatively charged are going to passively follow the sodium ions out of the filtrate and also into the interstitial fluid. So the sodium ions and the chloride ions together are going to form sodium chloride so we're going to have an accumulation of sodium chloride here so salt basically is going to build up here what that means is the osmolarity and the osmotic pressure of the interstitial fluid here is going to increase to greater than that of the tubular fluid so remember it's going to be a very um, high concentration of salt here and it's especially important in these lateral spaces in the interstitial fluid between the epithelial cells. So it's a much greater concentration because the area is a lot lower in between these cells. So moving on from this, the osmotic gradient is therefore created between the tubular fluid and the interstitial fluid which surrounds the proximal tubule. So remember, because the cells of the proximal tubule are permeable to water, water is then going to move by osmosis from the tubular fluid into the epithelial cells and then across the basal and lateral sides of the epith epithelial cells into the interstitial fluid. Because it makes sense because we've created a high salt concentration here, so obviously water is going to try and counteract that by moving via osmosis from a high to low water concentration through a partially permeable membrane. Now, the salt and water which gets reabsorbed, so water is going to pass through, salt is already accumulating here, and it's free to pass into the peritubular capillaries. And once it's in the peritubular capillaries, it's able to passively, obviously passively pass into the peritubular capillaries. Once it's in here, it's able to return, obviously, back into the blood supply.